Hi everybody, welcome to Australia. My name is Amy and I'm a wildlife biologist. That means I'm a scientist that studies wildlife. And I want you to join me on a field trip to Australia's Great Barrier Reef, where you can learn about our amazing world of wildlife. Australia is one of Earth's seven continents, and it's totally different than anywhere else on the planet. Australia's amazing landscape includes tropical beaches, ancient rainforests, and wide open plains. And Australia has all sorts of different wildlife, from kangaroos to koalas. Many of the animals that live in Australia are truly unique and different than almost anywhere else on Earth. But Australia's unique wildlife doesn't just live on land. Off the coast of this extraordinary continent, out in the Pacific Ocean, is Australia's world-famous Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef is absolutely gigantic. It's almost 1,600 miles long. That's the same as about 25,000 soccer fields lined up all in a row. And the Great Barrier Reef is so big that astronauts can even see it from outer space. Now, some people think that the reef off the coast of Australia has been around for 20 million years. So the Great Barrier Reef has been around for a really long time. But what exactly is the Great Barrier Reef? The Great Barrier Reef is a long chain of islands and their surrounding coral reefs that combine to make a home for thousands of different ocean plants and animals. There are more kinds of different living creatures here than almost anywhere else on Earth. Now an island is just a small piece of land out in the water, but what exactly is this massive coral reef that surrounds some ocean islands and where did it come from? To think about this, let's start off small. When you zoom in and look closely, you can see that coral structures can be made up of thousands of tiny coral polyps. Believe it or not, each polyp is actually an individual animal, just like you are an individual person. There are thousands of different coral species, or types of coral, on our planet, and they come in a wide range of shapes and sizes. Now, coral polyps live together in colonies, and as they live and die over thousands and thousands of years, they lay down a type of skeleton, or foundation. New coral grows on top of old coral, and as corals keep growing and dying, the foundation gets bigger and bigger. Over thousands of years, this process eventually creates a coral reef. A coral polyps have a symbiotic relationship with a certain kind of algae called zooxanthella. And this is a special kind of symbiotic relationship where both animals benefit from living with the other one. Coral polyps bring the microscopic zooxanthella into their body where they live together. Inside the polyp, the zooxanthella perform photosynthesis, turning sunlight into energy, just like a plant. So the zooxanthella help coral polyps by providing them with tons of energy during the day. The little polyps get the rest of their energy during the night when they use their tentacles, which are kind of like arms, to reach out and grab small food that passes by. In return, coral polyps help the zooxanthella by providing them a safe, cozy environment to live. The coral polyps, like all other animals, need certain resources to live and grow. Coral polyps need sunlight, which their zooxanthella use to produce energy to grow. They also need clean, unpolluted water that is not too deep and not too shallow. And the salt water that surrounds them also needs to be the right temperature. It can't be too hot and it can't be too cold. Coral polyps have been living with other types of plants and animals for millions of years. And that means over time, they formed interdependent relationships with those other animals. That just means that coral also depend on other living creatures around them to live and grow, and other creatures depend on coral reefs to live and grow too. Herbivorous fish are one very cool example of this. Herbivorous simply means an animal that only eats plants. Now this parrotfish and a bunch of other types of fish that live on the reef like to eat large algae. Now lots of different kinds of algae live on the reef. And some are really tiny like the microscopic zooxanthella that live inside coral polyps. And some algae grow bigger and you can see them living right on the reef. Now these algae are important because they provide food for herbivorous fish to eat. This parrotfish likes to eat the larger algae, and she and the other herbivorous fish on the reef eat a lot. 
Now, if the herbivorous fish disappeared, the algae would grow out of control and eventually take the reef over. When the algae take over, they block the coral underneath from getting sunlight. Without sunlight, the coral polyps can't produce the energy they need to live and grow. The coral become unhealthy and can eventually die, which is bad for the coral reef and all the other animals that call it their home. This is an example of an interdependent relationship. And it's just a one type of many different interdependent relationships that occur in coral reef ecosystems. Now, coral reef ecosystems exist across the world and they're super important. They provide a home for tons of different ocean, plants, and animals to live. This is called a habitat. A habitat is just another word for the natural environment that plants and animals use as a home. All the different living creatures in an area, together with the rest of the non-living environment, things like rocks, water, air, and the weather, make up an ecosystem. Now, lots of big animals like whales, sharks, turtles, and stingray use coral reefs to find food and shelter. A coral reefs also provide habitat for thousands of different types of fish and other smaller creatures like crabs and jellyfish. Without coral reef habitat, many ocean animals would have nowhere to call home. Now, coral reefs are also super important for people too. People like to visit coral reefs because they're so beautiful to explore. But they also give something called an ecosystem service. An ecosystem service is when the natural environment gives back to people like you and me in a big way. And coral reefs give all sorts of things back to people. When people visit areas with coral reefs, it provides tourism jobs for the people who live nearby, helping local towns and communities earn money. The Great Barrier Reef alone brings in almost five and a half billion dollars each year to local towns in Australia. Coral reefs also make a barrier in the ocean that protect those local communities from waves. As waves come in, they crash against the coral reef first instead of crashing on land. Over one billion people around the world live near a coral reef, so this is important stuff for a lot of people. Coral reef ecosystems also provide food for people from all over the world, including you. We eat fish, crab, and other seafood like scallops and clams, all of which can come from coral reefs. And coral reefs are not only beautiful, but they're super important. And keeping coral reefs around the world as healthy as we possibly can is a really big deal. So on our field trip, we're going to meet up with some scientists from Utah State University to learn more about the plants and animals that live on the Great Barrier Reef, how coral reef ecosystems work, and what keeps them healthy.